You look guilty of something. What is it? Welcome back to Terrier Owner, everybody. Thanks for stopping back by. Today we are going to cover a topic that I would assume that most of you want to know something about with Jack Russells, and that is how to crate train effectively, if you should be doing it, how to do it, and which crates you should be considering. So stick around for just a minute and we will be right back. Now, let's start diving into the specifics on crate training a Jack Russell Terrier. All right, guys, we're back, and I want to start diving into the specifics on crate training a Jack Russell Terrier right now because there is quite a bit of information I want to cover. I'm going to take the camera off of her for a few minutes. I purposely put her on a lead out here just so I could get a little bit of footage with her without her running around like crazy. Typically, she's okay, but when my son is out here doing his thing like he is right now, she tends to get a little more wild and round up and playing with him. So that's why she is on a lead. Typically that is not the case. But anyways, I want to start diving into this crate training stuff. So let's start hitting on the most important aspects of it. Okay, number one thing you need to know is crate training a Jack Russell Terrier is a fantastic, a recommended, an imperative, every single word that you can use to describe that you should be doing it that is what crate training and jack russell to me means you should be doing it it helps with everything it is so important i can't stress it enough however you need to be doing it correctly humanely ethically and so that it is actually being effective otherwise you're just wasting time caging an animal for no reason except for maybe to keep poop off your floor Whatever the case may be, if you're doing it wrong, it's not helping anybody. So we need to make sure that we understand how to do it right. Do it right means you start with the most basic thing first, which is getting the correct size crate, a crate that is going to work for a Jack Russell, and placing it in the correct room. Now, I use one of the most basic crates that you can get off of Amazon. I'm going to flip to a view of it here in a minute in the room that I keep her in, but I want to talk for just a second here first. It's a cheap crate. I think it's like 50 bucks. Sizing for these guys, we're looking at like a 24 by 20 by 20 length height width. Just making sure I'm not stupid here. Yeah, it's usually like a 24 by 20 by 20, I think. Somewhere in there, 24 by 18 by 19 maybe. That is ideal. But what you want is you want a crate with dividers or one divider, I should say, because what that allows you to do is when you first bring them home from the adoption, you're going to place that divider, which I'm going to show you. So don't worry about it. I'm going to show you placing the divider inside of the crate. You're going to place it in there, which is going to shrink that space. And the reason you do that is so that they do not soil themselves. They do not poop in the kennel. They don't pee in there because dogs hate laying in their own urine or feces. As they get older, you scoot that divider back because they're growing or you remove it completely. This completely, usually, will eliminate the potty problem inside of the crate. Alright guys, we're back inside the house now. I want to give you a quick little tutorial of that Amazon Basics dog crate that I use. It is the number one recommended dog crate I would start with for your Jack Russell. I didn't clean it up. She is shedding quite a bit, so you'll see a little bit of hair in it. And I did place the divider inside of it so that you can see. I didn't put a lot of time into placing the divider into it because my other dog was driving me crazy, which you're also going to meet here in just a second. But I just want to show you guys this crate and then we'll go over a couple of the basics with it. Okay guys, so this is the crate right here. It is that 24 by, I believe it's a 24 by 20 by 20. And what is nice about this crate and what I recommend is you definitely want to do the double door. It makes it really nice so that you can use the divider and place it inside without reaching way back in there. So what you do to do that here, sorry, I had to get the other dog out of the way, is you have this door here that opens, that's your main one. I placed this divider back inside of here so you could kind of see it. I angled it as well. That is an option. And then you have door number two. And what's pretty cool is underneath both doors, 
you have the option to lift these flaps so that you can pull out the tray liner. So you can go from either direction to pull this liner out to clean it, which I'll do obviously after this video since she's shedding like crazy in the middle of summer. And then you can also pull this out using this latch here. So you got two latches to remove this, two doors. This was actually the wood decorative one. I just took it off. I thought I would like it and I didn't. So it came looking more like an end table. Nice piece of cherry wood on the top and the bottom. And then this is your divider. It just pops just like that. You can remove it to give it a full size. You can shrink it depending on the size of your puppy when you bring them home. But this is a great crate. I've had it for the full almost two years that I've had her. It's worked great. We use it at night still and we use it when we leave but it is an excellent option and the crate that I recommend. Next, you need to understand that crates are not just a pick the dog up and throw her inside or him. Mine's a female, so I'm used to saying her. It is a shut the door and reward kind of deal. That They need to understand that when they don't freak out, when they behave in the crate, and when they understand that it's a safe spot to be, that they are doing something desirable. So it's more of a shut the door, give a treat kind of deal. This is going to make them associate that this is safe, this is good, I like going in here, I get something awesome every time it happens. And it will just quickly eliminate the problem of the nuisance howling and barking when they're a puppy. I went through about 48 hours of that and it was, it was terrible. I mean, I didn't barely sleep, and she was in a separate room. My God, these dogs can get loud. I I thought I was, it felt like I was on a boat on a lake with no wind, and just coyotes were howling. Like, she can get really loud when she is not happy, and she was not happy those first two nights in that crate, and she was letting me know about it. Reward them, make them comfortable, make them enjoy it. That is one of the biggest recommendations I can give to you. My next tip with crate training one of these guys is do not give up. It is so easy to give up. My wife wanted me to give up on like day two, let her out. I was already like two hours into the horrible experience. So I was like, well, there's no point in letting her out now. I've already lost two hours of sleep. We're looking at 1 a.m. Now it's just for nothing. She wins the battle if I let her out and she learns nothing. So I suffered through it. You need to do the same. I don't care how loud they're getting, how sad they look those little puppy tears if those even exist do not open that door make it through the night it gets better just leave it alone because after those few days are done and you've made it through that storm of the howling and the the ripping at the cage or biting at the bars you are going to be so glad that you did because you just opened the door to so many things we're talking they know that you're in charge they know that whining gets them nothing. They know that there is a place that they go for sleep. They know that if you're not around, such as running to the grocery store, going to work, having some cocktails, whatever the case may be, that that is going to be where they lay and they are going to have to deal with it because barking and acting ridiculous nets them no reward and nothing in general. Let's also not forget that a lot of people use crates in a very incorrect way and they don't mean to do it so here's what i mean by that so stick with me for a minute a lot of people use crates as only a put the dog in lock the door and then that's it you leave you go to work you come home you let them out or you're being bad i put you in you're being good i pull you out that is not how you have to crate train these guys some people even have like four of these crates around their house I am fine with one, use the same one. I feel like she just gets used to it, but this should be a come and go freely when you don't need it. So yes, when you're going to the store or when you're gonna go out binge drinking, you can put them in the crate and that's how it works. But when you're not using it for those purposes, leave the door open on it. If they're comfortable in there, they should be able to go in there and recognize that that's their safe spot all 24 hours of the day. It shouldn't matter what time it is, it should be a come and go style relationship between the dog and the crate. Another important thing to understand is that timing inside of the crate needs to increase slowly. We shouldn't be hitting the home run right out of the gates. We don't need to be going for, you know, the full eight hours away from home on crate round number one. We can do sleeping overnight on crate, now, 
crate round number one, but if you got a new puppy, we're all plenty aware by now, especially with how small these guys' bladders are, you ain't making it through the whole night regardless. So that's a perfect time to start the crate training is just to sleep at night because you're gonna, you need to be waking up to let them outside anyways to effectively potty train them. So the point being on this tip is that break it in slowly. It should be increased over time to where you become more comfortable keeping them in that crate when you leave for longer durations. One of the last tips I have for you guys about this is let's not forget that practice will make perfect and that they are still just a dog. So it's not gonna be perfect right out of the gates. You need to work with them. You need to make the crate comfortable. I highly recommend purchasing a dog bed to place inside of the crate. If you don't wanna spend that money, that's perfectly fine. Get a towel, 20 pairs of socks. Actually, that's not a good idea because they're gonna chew up those socks, so do not do that. Put a towel, something warm, so that it's not just always the bare crate. And it will get better as you go. Make it comfortable, make them understand what it's for, and everything gets easier as time goes by. All right, guys, that's about all I have on this topic of crate training. There is a related blog post on terrierowner.com. I am going to place the link in the description below. Please go visit it. Again, I'm a way better blogger than I am videographer, so there's a lot of other tips in there that I've probably left out of this video. Just go to Google, type in terrierowner.com crate training, or just go to the actual link in the description below to see that. The links in the description below for the crate that I use or a couple other recommended ones that are a little bit cheaper or just straight down below easy to use again if you're getting one of these dogs and you don't get a crate that's ludicrous to me you need to get one it shouldn't even be optional it's going to help you with discipline behavior everything in the long run so make sure you get one guys if you like this video or if you like my content in general give me one of those thumbs up down below let me know that you like this kind of content make sure you like subscribe to the channel hit that notification bell so you get notified on mondays and thursdays when these new videos come out and we will see you guys again next time mm -hmm.